In today's episode, you will learn how to enter a password using only one push button. Numbers from 0 to 9 are displayed on the LCD and a push button is used to select any number. This way you don't need a keypad matrix, which results in less wiring, reduced cost and easy programming as the one button password entering system needs only two Arduino pins. For the demonstration purposes, I connected a 220 volt AC indicator lamp. This indicator lamp can only be turned if the correct password is entered, while the reset button is used to turn off the relay. First, let's enter an invalid password. Now let's enter the correct password which is 7269. As you can see the indicator lamp is turned on. Now using the reset button the relay can be turned off. This project is based on 80 mega 328 microcontroller, the same microcontroller which is used in Arduino. To reduce the price, I designed my own PCB board and sent my PCB board Gerber files to PCBWay company, which is one of the top leading companies throughout the world. In part 1, I explained the whole process how to generate the Gerber files and how to place an online order. The link is given in the description. In this episode, I will cover number one, circuit diagram, number two, PCB explanation, number three, soldering, number four, programming, and finally, number five, testing. Let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the complete circuit diagram. This is a push button and is used to enter a password by selecting different numbers. One side of the push button is connected with the ground while the other side is connected with pin number 2 of the Arduino. This is also a push button and is used to reset the password and relay. One side of the push button is connected with the ground while the other side is connected with pin number 3 of the Arduino. This is a 16 into 2 LCD and will be used to display the numbers from 0 to 9. Pin number 1, 5 and 16 are connected with the ground. Pin number 2 and 15 are connected with 5 volts. Pin number 3 is connected with the middle pin of the variable resistor. This variable resistor will be used for the LCD contrast adjustment. The RS pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 6. The enable pin of the LCD is connected with pin number 7 of the Arduino. Pins D4 to D7 which are the data pins are connected with pins 8 to 11 of the Arduino. This is a 12 volt SPD type relay. This relay has 5 pins. These are the two coil pins, this is the common pin, this is the normally open pin and this is the normally closed pin. These three pins have no physical connection with the relay coil pins. This relay cannot be directly controlled using the controller. To energize this relay coil you need around 28 milliamps. This is not a fixed value. This depends on the size of the relay you are using. You can easily calculate this value. First find the relay coil resistance using a digital multimeter. As it's a 12 volt relay, so V is equal to 12 volts. Now using the Ohm's law, we can find the value of the current needed to energize the relay coil. The type of the relay I want to use needs 28 milliamps. So now I can use any general purpose NPN or PNP type transistor. So far its collector current is greater than 28 milliamps. But it is a good designing practice 
to use a larger value transistor. In my case, I'll be using 2N2222 NPN transistor as it's really cheap and you can find this transistor in any electronics shop. The collector of the 2N2222 NPN transistor is connected with the relay coil while the other side of the relay coil is connected with 12 volts. The emitter of the transistor is connected with the ground. A 10K resistor is connected with the base while the other side of the resistor is connected with pin number 13 of the Arduino. The transistor and resistor together makes the relay driver circuit. This is a freewheeling diode and is used against the big EMF protection. So that's all about the connections and now let's discuss the PCB designing. This PCB is designed in Gatesoft Eagle 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make a schematic and PCB then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. This is a double-sided PCB. The blue color represents the bottom side while the red color is the top side. All these connections or ace body circuit diagram is explained. Watch part 1 for the Gerber files generation and online order placement. The link is given in the description. You can download the PCB port files from my website. These are the PCB boards which I received from the PCBWay company. As you can see, the quality is really great and everything is ace for the order. During the online order placement, I selected blue color. But later, I decided to change it to black color. This change was only possible due to the friendly behavior of the PCBWay company staff members. I'm 100% satisfied with their work. First of all, I installed all the components. As you can see, maximum components are installed and now it's time to start the soldering. As you can see, maximum components are soldered and now only female headers and two variable resistors are balanced. So I'll be back after soldering the remaining components. As you can see, all the components are soldered. This variable resistor will be used for the LCD contrast adjustment. Over here, we can connect a 12 volt adapter or battery. After the soldering is completed, then I check the short circuit. So double check all the connections and make sure there is no short circuit before you power up the circuit. At the end, connect two buttons with pin number two and pin number three. Now let's discuss the programming. Hash include liquid crystal dot H. This is a library which is specially created for the 16 into 2 LCD. The same library can also be used with 16 into 4 LCD and some other types. H means that this is a pre-processor directive and dot H means that this is a header file. I have a very detailed getting started tutorial on how to use a 16 into 2 LCD. I will provide a link in the description. These are the LCD pins which I have already explained in the circuit diagram. Then I defined some variables of the type unsigned long for storing the time information. Then I defined some variables of the type integer. All the variables are well commented. Still, if you have any questions, let me know in a comment. As you know my friends, every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions which are the wide setup and wide loop functions. White means that this function is not returning any value, while the empty parentheses means that this function is not taking any arguments as the input. Serial.begin9600 activates the serial communication, while 9600 is the baud rate. This is used for the debugging purposes. Once the programming is completed, 
and you are satisfied with the results, then you can simply comment this. Set up the LCD's number of columns and rows. Clear the LCD and display this text message on the LCD using the lcd.print function. The two push buttons are set to input and the load is set to output using the pin mode function. Then starts the while loop function. These instructions are used to find the seconds and display it on the LCD. Password is a user defined function. It consists of the if conditions which are used to check if the button is pressed and the selected number is stored in the variable. Maximum of these instructions I have already explained in my previous tutorials. At the end we simply compare the entered values with the predefined values. If the values are equal, the load will turn on, otherwise the load will remain off. If the reset button is pressed, the load will turn off. The flag status and entered values will be changed back to zero. So that's all about the programming. If you have any questions, let me know in a comment. The project circuit diagram, PCB board file and programming can be downloaded from my website. The link is given in the description. I have already uploaded this program into the 80 mega 328 microcontroller using the Arduino's board. Let's watch this project in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode and thanks for watching.